Right, welcome back everybody, old and new. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, jump on that, do that now. Right, that's out of the way. Now, I just thought the other day, I was reading something, um, on I see it online, and it was uh, Curly from, they call I think they call him Curly from Carpology. He'd had his stuff, his gear stolen, and I thought, do you know what? I've, I've been through that many years ago. It's not nice. It takes us ages to get the kit, and it doesn't take long for some scumbag to just go and nick it. So I thought what I'd do is I'd show you what I do now, um, I'm not going to show you all the security, but I'm just going to show you the, sh the, the, the shed I keep it in because uh, you can get these in all different sizes. They're really good because like if you're like me where I've, I've moved quite a bit, you can take these down and bolt them back together. And they I've took them to bits, put them together, took them to bits, and they, they, they're really good for that. Whereas a wooden one, you, you can't. And also wooden ones are easy, easy to break into. They're a, a solid steel shed made by a company called Asgard. I'll st stick their website on here um, I, I own two of these I've got one from a camp and stuff when I say camping I don't mean when I'm blanking I mean for my actual when we go camp and camping so we keep the, the, the tents and all that sort of stuff in there and then I've got one for my fish and tackle and um, they're police approved and they're really they're, they're made from steel they're really really good uh, and also I'm fairly sure there's some of the, the rodents and that can't get in because of how they're built. So that again, that's another good thing for our fish and tackle. Uh, although I do, and if you, in this video you may see I've got a like a mouse trap in there, but you know prevention's better than cure. So because I've had my stuff eaten by mice or rats before, so I'll I'll show you around that in a minute and how I sort of set it up. Yes, it's not cheap, but uh, they are. Again, like you can buy whichever size suits you. The thing with them is they make as much, if not more, secondhand as they do new. So if you buy one, use it for X amount of years and decide to sell it, you don't lose any money. Well, you do lose, you can lose money, you might not lose money, depending on how they are at the time. I've found through the year, um, you, you can buy them cheaper in the winter than you can in the summer. So I buy mine in the winter when I, if I need one. Um, but they seem to hold their money really, really well. And I've, the one I've got now is, is worth £200 more than when I bought it because there's a, around about a 12 to 20 week waiting time on these sheds because they're in such demand. So a lot of people don't want to wait, so they'll pay good money for a second hand one, which is good because you know what I say, you can buy something and it loses money drastically. These don't. So it, it, it saves your kit in lots of ways. One's from um, thieves, one from rodents, and obviously you, you can get good money back for it. So that's them, and um, I'll, I'll show you that now. I'll take you around it and show you it now. The one I'm gonna show you is my, it's a brown one, and it's, they come in brown, cream, gray, and green, I think. If I remember, right. but go say go and have a look at the website, and you'll see them on there. Um, it's an eleven foot by seven. Uh, no, it's eleven by eleven by five foot. So I had to think there for a minute. Um, so yeah, it's eleven foot by five foot, and I can keep all, all all my gear in there. The only thing I don't keep in there, I don't keep my barra because that's in my van, and my bed that's in my van, and I don't keep my two man bivy in there or the cob. That's the only things I don't keep in there. Every other bit of my fishing kit, if you pack it right and pack it well, I can get in there. You'll also see I've got in there the you buy them off of like. Um, eBay and Amazon and places like that is the uh, clip together storage shelves. So you can alter them different sizes to suit your, what you want, higher, lower, depending on how you want to set it out. Um, but enough of that anyway, go into that. And then what I'll do is I'll do a little competition at the end. So here it is from the outside. This is an 11 by five. And, and it has all my tackle except for my two man bivy and the cob. So I'll take you and show you inside now. Right, it's quite dark in here, but I've got a light on, so hopefully you can see. Basically what I'll do is, that's sort of like around the tackle cave. But what I'll do is I'll take you for a wander around and show you how organized I am. So here, well, we're just inside the door on the left, got an old bin. And then here, I've got my retaining slings, landing nets, I've got a, this is like a pole that gives you depth. When you're out in a boat, you can put it on and it's all marked in feet and that so you can see what the depth is and a few other bits and pieces in here. And then on the end here, just put these straps around and there is all my carp porter bags. Hang on there nicely out of the way. It's making use of every bit of space you've got because 
I haven't got lots of space. On the top shelf, I've got I've got a load of these uh, you buy off like eBay, Amazon, and that. They're like um, I don't know what they call them really, so storage shelves that clip together different, and you can set the shelves at different sort of sizes. So up the top, what we've got up the top here is we've got that's where I keep bivy tables. So depending on which bivy table I want, go there. On here, I've got bank sticks, and there is my two rod set up and my pod so there are bank sticks with two rods set up and that's just a um, pod and then down next shelf we have my tackle bag and going lower there is my freezer bag oh go steady get level there's my freezer bag there's my everyday sort of food bag and this bag here is just a spares bag when I go filming and I'm not fishing um, which I'm hopefully I'm going to be doing a lot of this year and that's what I just take that instead of taking the other ones that's just a quick because I don't need everything and then at the bottom is a few bait buckets I use so everything up this end is what I use quite a bit and then we go down next up the top is spares you'll probably have seen them back this is what I love about with all the little bags with the little bits on that I keep that's a full of bags handy you get loads of bags and I just keep them up there spare spools from the 12 footers spare spools in there from the 10 foots and spare spools from the 13s in there and then oh, I have another one at the back and that's got um, like my kit in it for when you go to France for instance or you where you have to carry um, what's it called your fluorescent vest and breathalyzer and it's got other things in there like um, marker floats and this here is an old that's an old like stand you can put an iPad on. I'm keeping that because hopefully I'm going to get um, one of these new ch I've seen a chirper the other week, you know, the chirper plus or whatever they're called, and they're really good. So down here we have one of my bait boats, and then there on that one is my next bait boat. Yeah, extreme two bait boats, but there's a reason behind that. And I may end up with just one this year because I may be selling the little one, keep the big one. Down here I've got the two spare boxes that I use. Um, again, that's when I go for longer sessions. I want to check extra food or bait or anything like that in. On there, it's my rucksack, which has now been... Um, I've changed what I used to keep. I used to keep that in my bivy. Now that's going to be my clothes bag when I go uh, for longer sessions, say abroad. Underneath here, a couple more bait buckets and all my different shoes and boots and stuff. Go down to the bottom, up the top. Got all my water barrel, water barrels, water containers. and little weed rake there on here is just my spares my bits and pieces spares any anything i just chuck up here down on this one these are, again these are my, just my spare little um you get loads of these different patches and that over the years they're just kept there if i ever need them here this is my summer kit so i've got mozzie zapper the tracker fan and my ridge monkey shower in there on that level we have the two different uh what you want to call them covers for your beds that's a summer one spring autumn one that's a winter one which i don't think i'm going to use anymore since i've had the uh, new bed down on the bottom you'll probably struggle to see down there that's got my spare gas and then a few more buckets here we have my tracker chair my fox what chair that goes on the bed and my little fox uh, guest chair really love that and there's my unit for when i go to france I got given this, it's really cool. I'll have to show you this sometime. And um, I popped it there, I've got an idea for that. But that's a really cool little bag that was given to me by one of my customers. Right, as we come over here, I'll start on the bottom. I have two of these heavy duty boxes where the lids lock. They lock into themselves and they're sealed. There's no holes in them. So I keep my bait in here, monster crab in here, and my nuts in here. Uh, not keep my nuts in here, but the nuts boily in here. So they're all nice and protected there. There's my winter bivy on here at the moment. Then I have on the next shelf is the Fox Frontier on there. On the next shelf is the Frontier Extension. Then up the top there's a load of mats and bits and pieces, like bits out of the bivvies that I don't use, and um, ground sheets and stuff like that. That there, that's not my t-shirt. That's just what I use, an old rag I've got in here for wiping and cleaning and stuff. So on here, here's how all my rods. So there we have 10 foots marker and spod 12 foot 13 foot and then down the bottom that's where i keep the uh, unhooking mat and then coming around to the last bit 
air dry boily bags, big one, small one, and then it's a little sort of zip up freezery bag for baits as well. And then there is the uh, waders. And then what I have this spot here is just left for when I bring home a bivy. If it's still not wet and I can't get it dry outside, I just stand it here. Right, you made it to the end. So anyway, uh, thanks for keeping watching. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a little thing, a little uh, giveaway in a minute. And um, hopefully that, that gives you an idea. Like I say, they're not cheap, but no, neither is carp tackle. If you go out and you buy a bait boat or electric barra or, or you know, those sort of things this shed is is cheaper than them but it will keep your kit in in good condition from the rodents and uh, keep it with you instead of the uh, scumbag thieves so anyway what i'm going to do for the competition as you know if you follow this channel i do mugs i haven't been able to sell them due to postage now that might change very very soon because i've i'm uh, going to see someone this afternoon about uh, delivery so hopefully we can start selling them i think they're going to be around about 13 pound delivered uh, for for the for the mugs now what i've done is i've, I've just been into i've got a box full of them because i said i'm going to do them as giveaways to start with apart from obviously chesers tackle and bait cb baits uh or horn castle you can get them from there and uh, go in put your order in and then once a month what we do is i get the orders and then I, I give them to them and you can pick them up from there which they will be 10 pound from there because there's no postage but hopefully i can get these down to 13 pound at the minute it cost me about four pounds 60 to send them so that you know it's nearly 15 quid for a mug which they are good quality they're unique designs i've designed the background i've designed the logos and i paracord the handle for you in different colors so anyway enough of that i've got a box full of mugs what i bought last year and i've been doing them away as giveaways so i just went in and um, and i just stuck my hand in and grabbed the first one so what we'll do is i'll have a look and see which one it is so what i want all oh, to win it what i want to do is um give me some sort of uh say uh, what can we say let's do show me show me your tackle sheds show me how you um how neat you untidy and organized you are or how messy you are just for a bit of fun don't post them on here send it to email address this one and then i'll, I'll pick my favorite favorite one out of them and uh, you'll win this so anyway let's have a look what it is so it is we have again it's my logo on the front you've got a unique camo pattern on there and then this one <laughs> This one is the carp camo gone crazy. Right, it's just a funny little sort of um, piss take really on camo. You'll have seen some of the camo in, in mine. I'm not massive on camo, I don't mind it, it's fine, but I don't go 100% all camo. There's green, there's brown, there's all sorts, I don't care. But that's, yeah, that's quite a good one, camo. So if you wanna win this mug, the handle will be paracorded, I've just not got round to it. So, um, yeah, if you if you decide you want to have a chance to win it, send me the pictures and also just put on there what colour you'd like you'd like the handle. Or what I'll do is when I pick the winner, I'll just message you and say what colour do you want the handle and give you some options. So, yeah, chance to win that. Send your organised or unorganised pick of your tackle to here, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.